Something that just would not hurt a fly. Might bake it in a pie, but wouldn't hurt it. We had uh, all different kinds of, of characters, and they'd mingle in the crowds, and the kids would, would catch on to who they were and put them away. All I've got to say is, is that I wished it were that easy to identify the minions of, the, of Satan. Now, they all had names, and this is the character that Buck played. And uh, this guy is uh, discouragement. How many times in, in our life have you allowed discouragement to come into your, into your life, spiritually and physically? I can't do it. I can't, hand, I, I, I just, I heard a guy one time tell me when we were talking about the need to be baptized, he said, I can't be that good that long. And discouragement that those words came right out of his mouth discouragements he did not understand nor did he know that the grace of God is very strong and it helps us through our entire life I'm going to repeat something that one of our candidates said when he came and he said you can't out sin grace if as long as we are in the light, as Jesus is in the light, then his grace is there for us. His blood is there for us. Discouragement should never have a place in our life spiritually. We should never allow it physically. It's just like, you know, in, in school, somebody says, you know, you'd be real good on the debate team or you'd be real good in, in drama. Well, I, I, can't, I, 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 I can't do that. I don't like to stand up in front of crowds. My grandson didn't much care for it, but he had to take a class. And it was either band or drama. Well, he didn't much care for, for the band, so he went with drama. And he actually, uh, to the end, at the end of his time in uh, middle school, had a speaking role. He came a long way with the fact that he overcame discouragement's words that he whispered in his ear all the time. Another minion uh, that we had, another uh, agent of serpent, is distraction. And this was played by Kenny Course. And he had a I guess you'd call it, it was like a big balloon, but it was thick. And it was on a rubber band. And he just kept going, bump, 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 bump. I was ready to get up out of, my, out of where I was so I could put my pocket knife in the end of that balloon. It was so distractive. And, but in our life, we have so many distractions that turns us away from the time that we spend with God, the teachings that God gives us. One of those distractions is television. Another distraction is uh, the things that we like to do and instead of worshiping God. Instead of coming to church in Amarillo, now they have all kinds of little kids' sports during the morning hours of Sunday. How much more distraction? Parents are, are trapped now. Do I take my kids to to the ball practice or do I take them to church where they will learn something about the word of God? I can't tell you how many individuals that I gave a lot of credit to, to their strength and their abilities to do things that would take them instead to the ball practice instead of church. Another character that we had and uh, this was uh, played by Angela, and she did a very good, a very good job of it. And this was uh, different. She was an agent of serpent. And so every day she would come in, and what she was trying to do was to encourage you that you leave these people alone because they're different. They may talk funny. They may walk funny. They may act 
unusual around you. So stay away from them. They're not the kind that you want to be around. And Angela did, a, I thought, an outstanding job in, in the role of this character. And yes, she got her little self put in jail a time or two, and she escaped three or four times. But the kids delighted in nothing more than to keep the agents of serpent in their proper place. We need to realize just because somebody is different does not mean that it's contagious. It's just like going to a nursing home and, and, and these, these older citizens want to hold your hand or give you a hug or, or with kids pick them up. And then I'm here to tell you, old age is not something that you can catch. It's something that you grow into. So it is important for us to realize that when people are different, we need to treat them as the same as we would anybody else. And that point was driven home to me the other day. Uh, there is a lady who came down our road, uh, and she had a young man. Uh, I don't know how old he was, but he could barely see over the steering wheel of the four-wheel he was driving. And... Uh, I stopped and we visited there. I knew who she was. She has a, a son who evidently is the victim of cerebral palsy. And he is uh, in, in pretty severe. And Johnny and I were talking to the mother and I talked to the driver and said something to the mother and the young man spoke out. He followed every word that we were saying. He knew what was going on. He communicated into the activity on target, by the way. You know, he, not only did he know what we were saying, he had a good answer to it. I didn't understand him, but his mother did and translated for us. Here, all of this time, my mind was saying, he's taking up space. He's not understanding. He's different until he showed me that he was not different. He was having to approach his communication in a totally different way than I would. Kind of shamed me a little bit, but I'll tell you what, that message struck home to me because not everybody that is different is bad. And then we had one more, uh, well, actually we had several more, uh, the, another servant was uh, of Satan was doubt. Have you ever doubted yourself? I doubt that I can do this. I doubt that I can be successful. I, I don't think that I can do it. And your parents are trying to tell you you can do anything you set your mind to do. And in my mind, I'm saying I doubt it. Because doubt, when he works in our mind, he is the one that can keep us either out of the kingdom of God or being weak in the kingdom of God because we doubt our abilities to do God's work because we doubt we have the skills. And, and for example... I, they used to have these door knocking campaigns. You remember those? In fact, we had a gentleman come through not too long ago that uh, had been on a door knocking uh, campaign up in Nebraska. You don't hear of them very much anymore. But I thought, well, you know, I, I, I'm not too sure about that. But what I began to realize is that I know where my giftedness is. And because I don't feel that my strength is there, that does mean that I have a strength over here that is strong and can be put to work for God. But the other side of that coin is because I doubt this part, I begin to doubt what I can do. And so doubt whispers in our ear, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I can't be a good, like I said, I can't be that good that long. 
but I don't have to be that good. I have God's grace to help me. And uh, another one that we had, and, and she was precious, deception. And she baked little pies with bombs in them. And I'm here to tell you, they do blow up. Because one exploded on me. And it was pretty good whipped cream, too. But doesn't she look sweet? And doesn't she look grandmotherly? And she's got her pie there, just happens to have a fuse on the side of it. Wanda Page did a beautiful job with this. And yes, she got into the big house every now and then. But she didn't put up much of struggle when she got caught. But some of our guys did. But you know, there are many things in our times and in our lives when, when we are flat out deceived. You ever made a handshake deal with somebody and I'll be there at 7 o'clock and I'm going to do this and do that and you shake hands on it. You never see them again, ever. You were deceived. It may be deception takes many disguises, as do all of these others. But these are the ones that the children saw. And then the last, last agent of serpent that we had was distraction. Have we had distraction before? I don't think so. This was the one that was played by Kenny and his balloon. He did a good job. He, uh, while Jeff was doing our MC work, he'd slither, literally slither up the steps, across the pulpit, and down and out. Because he was just a little bit of everywhere. You'd think he'd be noticeable. And he was. But fortunately, our children were engaged. And there is one more character that I think that is important for us to realize that it is real and alive. You got her? <laughs> and that is we had a, a puppet, and the reason I said that I'll explain in a minute, of a S-N-A-K-E. Did she spell that? <laughs> anyway, we had a, a serpent that as the kids would come in, he would just be contrary. And we had a, a, a bomb that had been made, and in order to defuse the bomb, you had to answer the Bible question right. And when you pull the right one, A, B, or C, if you pull the wrong one, it burst. I'd pin a balloon, and it'd make a big boom sound. And it <laughs> scared Harley so bad when her group came in, we didn't do the snake anymore. But the older kids really enjoyed the snake. And in doing the, in doing the snake, I had a lot of fun with them. I had a little, little peephole where I could see what they were fixing to do, and I knew the answer. And sometimes they'd get ready to pull the right answer, and I'd tell them, don't pull that one, don't pull that one, and I'd just get louder and louder and louder. Or I'd tell them to pull the right one. And as, uh, as the fun part of that was is that it became very entertaining. But one thing I noticed with our older age group, and it's not a bad thing, but as they would finish theirs, either on the way out to their next activity or after they'd done their activity, they all wanted to tease the snake. And sometimes they would reach their hand up there for me to, to make a strike at it. Or they would toss something into the little puppet stand. And it was all in fun. I mean, there was, there was not any meanness uh, about it. But here's what I want you to know. <clears throat> Everybody. 
is that Satan 